there are five things that every birth photographer needs to include in their contract. And by the end of this video, I am gonna show you everything that you need to include in your contract to be successful. Am I pausing enough for you? Hey y'all, my name is Tavia. I am the owner of The Beauty and Birth and I train birth photographers to run successful businesses. Each and every week on this channel, I release a new video on Friday, so make sure and click that subscribe button and click the little bell to get notified when I add a new video. After photographing birth for seven years and working with hundreds of birth photographers, I have realized there are some really important things to include in your contract every single time you work with a client. And along the way, I've learned some hard lessons that I wanna share with you, so hopefully you don't have to learn those lessons the hard way too. Like this one time a mom hired me for birth photography and then went into labor and decided she did not want me to come to her birth. Or when somebody asks for a refund if they have a c-section. Or what happens if you miss the birth entirely? What do you do? We're going to talk about all the what ifs that come up in birth photography, what you should do about them, and how you should address them in your contract. Okay let's just get this out of the way right now. I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. I am just sharing something with you guys that has worked really well for me. So I just want to share my experience with you. Birth photography, as I'm sure you know, is so much different than portrait photography. There are a lot more unknowns with births, which is why I have a separate portrait and birth contract because they're so vastly different and I encourage you to do the same. Also, when you have a contract, it's a good excuse to sit down with a client and go over some things that might be hard to bring up and might be difficult to talk about, but the contract gives you a reason to sit down with them and discuss these really, really important things. Disappointment is usually unmet expectations, so this is a time for you to sit down with your client and explain to them what to expect to hopefully avoid disappointment later. Okay, the first thing I want you to include in your contract is specifically address what happens if you miss the birth and it's your fault. Hopefully this doesn't happen. Hopefully you have backup photographers in place, but if something crazy happens and nobody makes it to the birth, what are you going to do? Are you going to offer a full refund? Are you going to offer a partial refund? Maybe do a fresh 48 or offer some sort of studio credit? There's really not a right or wrong answer here. Here. The important thing is to just make sure and address it and discuss with your client beforehand what is going to happen. The second thing I want you to include in your contract is what happens if you miss the birth and it's the client's fault. So I've definitely had births where the mom labored so fast, nobody made it in time or I didn't make it in time and it really was nobody's fault. It's not really the client's fault if they have a fast labor, but it's important to discuss with them what happens if you have a fast labor and I don't make it in time. I always ask for two hours from when they tell me to come to when I actually get there. And I tell that to them in person to make sure that they understand they need to leave plenty of time for me to get there. So I always say, you're not going to bother me. Please let me know anytime you think labor is starting so we can be in communication and I can make sure to get there. Discussing what happens in these situations is going to help keep your client happy and keep them from being disappointed if you miss their birth. There's this thing called labor denial and it's completely real. And it's where moms are in labor for hours or even days before they really realize it or they think that they're in labor, but they're like, ah, oh, I'm not really in labor. They're just denying they're in labor until they're almost in transition and then it's too late to call you. So it's really, really helpful if they have a birth team that you be in touch with their doula or their midwife. Let dad know that he's able to text you as well if he thinks anything is going on and mom hasn't texted you yet. I always, always tell them you're not going to bother me. So if anything is going on, please let me know because if I miss the birth because you called me too late, there are no refunds and make sure and address that so that they really, really understand how important it is to let you know at the beginning signs of labor. What happens if they change their mind? That happened to me one time. What happens if they get to 35 weeks and they suddenly decide they don't want birth photos anymore? What does your contract say about refunds if they happen to change their mind? You can do whatever you'd like. I know that I do not offer refunds of any kind if they change their mind, simply because I take a limited number of births per month and that spot could have gone to somebody else. And so I just let them know in the contract ahead of time, there are no refunds for voluntary cancellations. Is this making sense so far? If you're with me, type birth in the comments. The third thing I want you to include in your contract is what happens if they have not paid their balance by the time you're going on call for them. So what I do is I ask that their balance is paid by 38 weeks 
because that's when I go on call for them. If they haven't paid their balance by the time you go on call for them, it's completely up to you what to do. Approaching their due date, if they haven't paid their balance, a lot of times I'll check in with them and see how their pregnancy is going. If we haven't scheduled their final birth consultation, I'll do that at that time. And then I'll ask them how they wanna take care of the balance because it's due by 38 weeks because that's when I go on call for them. So just think ahead a little bit about how you wanna handle this. If they haven't paid the balance by 38 weeks, what happens? Are you going to refund their money and not be on call for them anymore? Or are you going to offer an extended payment plan? What's in your contract and how do you wanna handle this? I have worked out extended payment plans with clients before, but it can get a little bit tricky. So make sure you proceed with caution here. I usually have only done it for past clients or people that I know personally. It can get a little bit hairy when you're talking about your on call and when do you deliver their photos and all that kind of stuff. And you don't ever want any pent up or hurt feelings about any of this. So that's why communication is really, really important here. The fourth thing that I want you to include in your contract is kind of a tough thing to talk about, but it's important that it's addressed. What happens if the client has a stillbirth or a miscarriage after they book you? I do not accept a deposit until the client is 12 weeks because your chance of miscarriage goes way, way down after 12 weeks. So after they're out of the first trimester, I will accept a deposit. Up until then, I'm willing to meet with them and have a consultation. I just don't actually take the official deposit. And I don't ever actually say those words to the client. I don't ever want to put the idea of loss or miscarriage in their mind. So I don't openly say that's the reason I'm not taking their deposit. I just usually push their consultation date a little bit later in the first trimester. And then I'll go ahead and send that invoice and contract when I know that they are past that 12 week mark. Thankfully, I personally haven't had to deal with stillbirth a lot with my clients, even though I photograph so many births. But in the times that it has been an issue, I completely leave it up to the client. If they want a refund and they don't want me there to photograph the birth, I'm happy to do that. If they want me there and they want me to photograph the birth, I'm happy to do that too. So I just leave that option up to them. The fifth thing I want you to include in your contract is addressing the final photo delivery. How are they going to get their photos? How many photos are they going to get? What format are they going to get the photos in? Are they going to get color in black and white or both or mostly black and white or some color? Again, it's important to address this ahead of time so that the client knows what to expect. Disappointment is usually unmet expectations. So if your client assumes they're getting 200 photos and you only deliver 50, neither one of you is wrong. There was just a lack of communication. So this is the point where you say you'll get your photos 14 days after birth. 75% of the photos will be in black and white. 25% will be in color. And I deliver the images in JPEG via digital download. So do you see how I hit all those points with that? However, you're doing those things, make sure to address them to your client as well as in the contract. Make sure and hit that subscribe button. Each and every Friday, I release a new video that's going to help you grow your birth photography business. And if you like this video, click the little like button below. That helps it get seen by more people. And I really, really appreciate your feedback. If you have any questions about contracts or birth photography, make sure to drop them in the comments. I reply to each and every comment. Lastly, there is a cheat sheet I made just for you to lay out exactly what to write in your birth photography contract. The link is below. So make sure to download that if you need a little bit of extra handholding as you create this contract. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.